Hi everyone, uh, this short video I'm just going to be making is looking at the process I go through to make one of these, which is an emerging bowl. Okay, this one's made out of sycamore, uh, it was the first one I made, uh, it's got a couple of faults on it, which uh, I'll come back to uh, as I go through the process uh, and use this as an example of how to avoid those uh, bits and pieces. The piece I've got on the lathe at the moment I started before I got myself set up to do uh, any recording uh, but I haven't got far through the piece and uh, I can explain what, what I've done so far and then all the more complicated parts um, you will pick up during the, uh, the, the video. So if I just move the camera so you can see the piece that's on the lathe at the moment. Um, this is a piece of elm. Uh, it was an elm log, uh, part of a tree that we uh, cut down in our garden when we moved in a few years ago. It had been sort of self-seeded and grown in a very silly, strange place. <coughs> um, so it's about six and a half, seven inches long, uh, about four and a half inches diameter. Uh, this piece uh, I managed to make uh, with a sycamore leaving the bark on. The piece of elm, the bark was coming off that, um, so I took all that off before I put it on the lathe, just so it didn't start flying all over the workshop when uh, when I started turning it. So what I've done so far is this was put in between centres, uh, step centres, and a, 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 a each end. Turned it round. And then I put a spigot on one end. Now I'm using Axminster Mega Jaws, uh, and the reason for this, uh, as you'll see later on, I need a good size spigot on this end, as that will go into uh, a jig that I'll use later on when we're turning the the off centre part of the bowl. Um, with this uh, spigot on here, it is about 12 millimetres. Um, I've not tried doing this with uh, smaller spigots, uh, as you'll see you need something substantial to hold it, so if you're using something like a 50, 50 millimetre type uh, 2 inch jaw with uh, 3 or 4 millimetre tenon on, that's not going to be substantial enough as you'll see later on. So the blank needs to be big enough to take that, uh, <coughs> that spigot is um, 106 mil at the widest, 100 mil at the narrowest part uh, to get the optimum size on there. Then what I've done on this end of here, I've turned this into a dome shape. Now you need to be fairly accurate with this. If you don't and you get this slightly elongated, and I'll show you on, on here, what happens when you turn, when I first turn it, this one is slightly elongated. Uh, looks reasonably fine when you look at it at that side but then you realize when you start turning the uh, the round uh, center part of the bowl when you're hollowing this out that the wall thickness starts to get longer where it's been uh, where it's elongated so to avoid that what you need to do is make sure this is completely round what I've done uh, I made some templates up uh, this one, various sizes, uh, this has turned out to be about 90 millimetres. It's not quite there yet, uh, just a couple of little high points, it nearly, nearly fits, uh, but I can see a couple of little gaps. So first job I'm going to do to finish this off is I will just refine this shape, um, probably just do it with a scraper. Just to, just to get those couple of high points off to, in order to get this to, uh, to be exactly the right size. close now uh, very round so the next piece I'm going to do is 
on that down then we're just going to sand this part here because it's easier to get that to a finished state now before we move on to the next stage. I also sanded the main section of the piece at this stage as well. Sanded through to 600 grit on there, uh, and that's basically the first stage of this done. This first set, as I was mentioning, this is quite a large tenon on here, 10-12 uh, millimeter uh, thickness, um, quite a chunky piece. And as you'll see later on, that will form part of uh, the fixings in the jig when we uh, do it when it's all cut in half and we're hollowing out the centre. So that's the first stage done. So the next stage we need to go through to make the emerging bowl is to make a jig that this uh, spigot will fit into and hold on the off centre uh, uh, jig that I have. Now what I use to do my off centre turning is this which is a large diameter piece of plywood, 18 millimetres thick maximum size for the uh, uh, that and get uh, over the bed on my lathe and it's got large base plate on that fits directly onto the, uh, the spindle on the lathe. <coughs> what we're going to be doing is attaching a square piece of 18mm ply onto the, that board uh, <coughs> and then what we'll do the small area diameter on this spigot here is 100 millimeters so we'll be cutting out a 100mm circle on here uh, to the depth of the spigot, which is not the full depth. You see on it's not the full depth of the, uh, the plywood. And then we'll put a dovetail on that. I'm going to take it off the, uh, uh, the lathe and then we'll cut that in half. So we've got two pieces that uh, can be used as part of the jig. You can see how that's uh, done later on. After fixing the piece with a centre screw, I then fixed it with four further screws drilling in a pilot hole first, then remove the centre screw in the area that we're going to turn away.
going to take this off the uh, jig and we'll cut it in half across there and you'll see how it fits around the uh, the base of the uh, uh, immersion bowl that we've done earlier. Okay, so here we have the uh, two finished pieces and they slot round the spigot that we've got on the base of here. So when you cut this in half, you'll have one of these for, uh, for each side. And you'll see how they fasten onto the jig uh, in, a, in a few minutes. Okay, I've completed the next stage of preparing the, uh, uh, the blank that we did before. So we've now cut the edges of both sides and then I've cut the piece in two. Okay. I've power sanded this flat edge which will be the base of the, the piece. Uh, and this end with the dovetail uh, tenon on, that's going to be a bit of scrap wood that we'll cut off towards the end of it. I've also marked, uh, you can see a centre point here, which is the centre of this circle here that we've made for the, the bowl. And that will need to be the point where we centre this on the off-centre jig when we, when we mount it up to make sure we get the bowl in the uh, inside of the bowl in the right place. <coughs> so the next piece one half of this which slots onto the end here what we need to do now is turn around that way is cut this excess off so that we're, the the piece is level with this base which is a piece that's going to be mounted onto the uh, the jig <coughs> and then we'll put a couple of screws through the end of here into the end of the tenon uh, a piece here uh, to make sure this is held securely within the jig piece. Once we've completed that I'll show you how to mount it onto my uh, off-centre uh, turning jig. Okay we've fastened the uh, jig onto the bottom of here now so I've trimmed off the back so that that's flush with the, the face. Put a couple of screws into the, the end here so this is firmly attached to here. Now what I'm going to do is position it and attach it on here. So first of all bring the tail stock up like that and into the position where I've marked the centre just tighten that up with the tail stock. Now before I do anything else I just want to check that this is central. We'll do that by just putting the tool rest in and then with a pencil we'll go draw, start on here and just go around to make sure that we've got it in the correct place and that looks good to me so that's going to be the, the correct position so we just remove this again and hold this flat up here so we know we've got this centralised in the right place so the next piece is to attach this section to the main backboard and the way we'll do that is we're going to mark the position for this then drill some holes and screw through from the back probably with three screws um, one into each end of the, the plywood jig and then one into the uh, uh, through the jig into the spigot so I'm just going to check where we are so what I'm going to do is just draw around this so I know where we're going to position it and then we'll remove, remove the tail stock. Fasten the piece now with a jig onto the board. Um, now two pieces, so think about it. First of all, we we'll take this away, whilst this is nice and secure here, so you're trying to see here, this piece still moves in the middle. So we need to uh, sort out that. Secondly, we've got all the weight on one side, so I need to put a counterbalance weight on this side here. So I'll just bring the tail stop back up, just to make sure that's pressed in the right place. What I'm going to do is put a piece of wood onto here. Uh, it's just a scrap piece of wood um, that I use. 
you can use square piece if you wish um, and that will butt up to here like this but the reason I use a slightly chamfered piece is it will go underneath here and that you'll see in a minute or two will help me to fix this in the central piece <coughs> uh, <coughs> the other thing to think about is the thickness of the wood it needs to be preferably be less than the thickness of the piece that you're working on otherwise you end up turning this away um, and this has been slightly on the, the top here from a previous one so what I do is when I put these screws in is I actually drill the holes uh, a, a wider hole part way through so the screw heads are well into the wood so if I do end up turning this top surface off I haven't got a screw at the head at the surface that the tools are going to catch on because it very quickly wrecks your tools <coughs> so I'm going to position this <coughs> opposite uh, the the main piece that we're turning <coughs> and I want it in contact with the bowl as well <coughs> and then we'll just screw that onto the board What I'm going to do now is use some, use use some hot melt glue into this piece here uh, and what we'll do is, is pull it apart, squeeze some glue in there, push it down tight so it's up against the backboard and hold that in place with the tailstock and then let the glue set and that will hold this end of the piece in position while we're turning it. Once we've finished it what we'll do is take these two pieces off and then get a hot air gun and we'll melt the glue and take the glue off. And just bring the tail stock up. Put that in position. And then we'll just put a bit more glue around the top of this part here. Now we're in position. Once you're happy that the glue's set, a couple of things we're now going to check. So we'll just take the tail stop back. I just want to check that this doesn't move. And that's fairly tight and secure now compared with how we could move it before. Bring the tail stop back up again. that off, that spins okay, and then we're just going to start the lathe up and see how out of balance it is, it will still be slightly out of balance, <coughs> so I think this piece of wood is probably slightly heavier than the piece that's overhanging here, uh, but as long as it's not too bad then we should have a problem, so stand well out of the way when you first start this up. Well, that's okay. Uh, slightly out of balance but uh, uh, not causing too many problems. So all we're going to do now is take uh, a couple of cuts across here to uh, take all the uh, tooth marks out from the, uh, the saw cuts uh, and finish this, uh, this face off. Then we'll take the tail stock away and we'll hollow out this bowl that we've made at this end. So we'll do these cuts with the tail stock in place. So again, just making sure that you're not going to catch anything uh, on the revolving centre here. Now what I'm also going to do is mark the position where this is, because when this is turning, I'll be able to see the, the, the ghost in the piece turning. But I'll also see this. What I really want to know is where the edges of this piece are so I don't need to be worrying about uh, going beyond that. <coughs> I'm also going to just draw <coughs> a quick circle on here just to start us off. Just as a, a guide mark to start with <coughs> and I'll probably just cut from around here so within the area that we're going to have the bowl so I'll just take this top surface off here. 
for it. We've got to put a piece of masking tape on the tool rest. I'm looking at this is going to be about the maximum point here where the edge of this ball is. So I know that if I'm doing a pull cut from here or starting to come in, this is about where the edge of the wood is going to, uh, going to be.
we have our bowl uh, hollowed out and as you've seen I've just sort of recessed it slightly into the uh, uh, the main piece so what we need to do now is while it's on here is sand it uh, you can do the bowl obviously uh, with the lace spinning as uh, that's safe to do the rest of it you can't as this comes around you you, you know it's not possible to sand this whilst you're uh, whilst the lace spinning so we'll just power sand the uh, the top surface of here so here we have the piece sanded up now uh, what we're now going to do is take it off the backing board and then we'll melt the glue so we can part these two pieces What I'm going to do is put some heat into here, enough just to get the two pieces apart first. <coughs> Now we're going to get the rest of the glue off here. All we just want to be careful of is not to get the piece too hot and uh, crack it at all, but get the glue hot enough so we can uh, just uh, wipe it and scrape it off. Probably a little bit of residue still on there. Once that uh, dries, because the wood's getting quite warm now, um, pour it off with a bit of sandpaper, uh, 400 grit, 600 grit sandpaper, and just clean that surface off. And here we have the finished uh, piece. Uh, cut off the tenon, sanded that end, and I've finished this with three coats of chestnut tongue oil, which slightly darkens that very pale sapwood, which I think is a, a, a better finish. And as you probably worked out with this project, you get two for the price of one. So I've finished off the second piece. This one I've made it with the bowl slightly proud of the back section. And I finished this with uh, chestnut hard wax oil. Again, that gives it a slight, slightly darkens the, that pale sapwood. There'll be some close up pictures of the pieces coming up in a, uh, uh, a few minutes on the, uh, at the end of this, this film. But if you watch all the way through, I'd just like to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, uh, and if you've got any questions or comments, then please uh, do add them, and uh, I'll get back to. I'll respond to every all the comments as soon as I can do. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.